Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Carolel's Caregiver Conversation Series, the April edition. Matt Perrin here with you, Director of Care Caregiver Engagement here at Carolel. Um, I'm happy to be joined by my friend Perry Mims again. Uh, probably a familiar face if you've been to one of these sessions. Hey Perry, how are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to talk about insurance. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and me both, you and me both, but it's an important topic. So you just gave away the lead. Today's topic is um, is is working with our loved ones insurance. And um, I, I'm actually pretty excited about it, Perry, uh, for two reasons. Number one, when I was caring for my mom, it was a really, uh, at times, a frustrating experience. Uh, number two, looking back now that I'm no longer in a caregiving role, um, I feel like it was a missed opportunity for me as I was caregiving. And I think I think there are some things that I could have done that um, would have really made things so much easier on myself um, and improved uh, my quality of life, my mom's quality of life in that period of time. So I am excited about it, as cliche as uh, it may sound. So, um, and, and if you're new here, first time in one of these sessions, um, thank you for being here. Welcome. Uh, I'm going to run through a just about 90 seconds, hopefully, of, of housekeeping, and then we'll jump in. Uh, first and foremost, we're Carallel. We're a caregiver support company. That means we help people who are helping um, an aging, chronically ill, disabled loved one. And we help in two primary ways. Number one, we offer a, a, our caregiver support line um, where a team of care advocates, uh, of which Perry's a part, um, help people with anything that's on their plate. It could be um, just lending an ear for somebody to, uh, to, to listen with compassion and, and without judgment. It could be uh, tactical help, thinking through things like advanced care planning or getting care in the home. Um, it, anything that's on your plate as a, a family caregiver, our support line, our care advocates on our support line are, are, are able, able to help. And we co complement that human support with My Care Desk by Carolel, which is your one-stop shop, digital hub, for all things caregiving. It's chock full of educational articles, helpful videos, practical tools like checklists and, um, and, and how-to guides and uh, anything you need, it's always available in our secure My Care Desk by Care Law. So that's how we help caregivers and we make the service available through employers and health plans across the country. Um, so if you're not sure if, whether you have access, ask your employer, ask your health plan uh, to see. So that's number one. Number two is uh, these are conversations by design. Uh, so you've, you've probably sick of hearing me say that if you've been to these sessions before, but we really, really, really mean it. So if you have questions, comments, perspectives to share, please do so. Um, and actually today we have one bonus piece of housekeeping. Uh, there is a handout that we have that sort of touches on a bunch of the tips that we're gonna be talking about. Um, you should be able to download it directly through your GoToWebinar console. Um, Wow, it's a lot of talking for me. Perry, did, did I miss any of our housekeeping? I think that was great. Okay, Couldn't great. have done it better. Yeah, I love it. All right, thank you, thank you. Patronizing me already. Um, so let's jump in. Now, Perry, I wanna start with a question, right? Uh, and as as usual, we're focused on the, the practical, um, practical aspects of any topic we're talking about. So, um, <laughs> Today's topic, that really boils down to two things, in my opinion. Number one, um, uh, the reality of how and why it can be frustrating or challenging at times to work with, uh, with, with, with our loved ones insurance company. Uh, but more importantly, um, the, the, the tips, the things that we can be doing to make that easier. Um, but I wanted to start with a question, Perry. Uh, just how, how, how is it so frustrating at times, right, to work with, with our loved ones insurance when we're, we're caring for them. So I might have given off the, the wrong vibe in the beginning. I actually <laughs> think that if you can get um, to a place where it's easy for you to converse with the insurance company, it can be hugely beneficial. Um, you can also learn about different ways to access them if you don't want to do it over the phone. Often they have online portals that might be easier for you to pull information from and things like that. So first of all, you know, anytime 
I feel like there's something big on my to-do list or something with a lot of unknowns or that I might get asked a question that I don't have the answer to, all of those, all of those things can make me a little bit more hesitant to go ahead and do it. Um, and just feels like that to-do list can get piled up on. And sometimes insurance or any bills or policies will just go into that list of things. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily frustrating, but it's not something a lot of people get super yeah. like excited to, to have that conversation yeah yeah and it well for me it was frustrating in my experience and i only use that word because and, and that was really um my fault right because i was reacting instead of being proactive which is sort of a a, a common theme um that, that'll that'll sort of be woven throughout today's discussion but i was um you know forever i felt like i was trying to play catch up right i was calling when i really needed to call or um you know, uh, trying to find an answer when I really need an answer. Um, instead of, you know, had I had I taken certain steps, uh, the barriers that I may have encountered when I was trying to call or find that answer um, wouldn't have been there, right? Um, so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, and, and to your point, um, and to the point I made of sort of kicking this off is, um, you know, in retrospect, and just in my own personal experience, I, I, you know, I, I do see it. My lack of sort of proactive um, uh, attention right, to, to this piece uh, was a huge, huge, huge missed opportunity for me because, uh, well, we'll detail some of that um, moving forward. But let, let's talk about the tips. Uh, and they're, you know, the, as I mentioned in the description of today's session, they're pretty simple. You know, they're, they're, they're really, um, they're really basic, but can have a, a just a, um, a very outsized positive impact. Um, and the first is, uh, and we've sort of given away a little bit of the theme, but you know, being proactive on paperwork, right? Uh, with the insurance company. Um, so getting things like, um, you know, an authorized representative form in place and stuff like that. Like, what are your thoughts on, on that as the first tip, Perry? Being proactive in general on the the sort of paperwork that, that clears the path for us to work with uh, our loved one's insurance company. I think this is fair to say with a lot of different aspects of caregiving, it's what you have access to as a caregiver, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a part of medical decisions or financial decisions or interacting with insurance, you know, they all might have different things that allow you to access them. Um, and I'm sure this is something that a lot of people have gone through. It's like you could even be like a, um, a cable bill. You go to call up and you, you want to ask a question and they're like, well, what's your account number? What's your this? And they start asking questions. And even if you've been on hold for a while, for some reason or another, you don't have that information in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you're not the account holder, so they won't give you that information. That's something that a lot of people will run into as a caregiver for a loved one. Um, so if you are get certain documents in place with something like the insurance company, and they have different names, they're usually available on their website. Um, sometimes they're called personal authorization forms. Sometimes they're called uh, personal representation forms. You know, they might have a different name to them. And sometimes there will be more and more than one form available for each insurance company. That said, um, they usually, if there are more than one, it's because they allow you to do different things. Um, personally, I, as I know we talk a lot about being practical, I usually go with the easiest form to get filled out first. Um, this does not have to be what everybody else does, but like if there's something that I can fill out that's going to let me have the conversation that I need to have right now, and it, maybe it doesn't let me make changes on behalf of their account or something like that, but it lets me at least get started, I like to take care of that right away. Mm -hmm. And then if I still need to be more involved in the care and the information and, and things like that, then going to, ahead to the next one. But Definitely filling out that form can make it so you can have these conversations in the first place. I love that uh, that nugget in there that you had, just start with the easiest form first, right? Um, you know, m makes uh, makes per perfect sense and I, I wish I had done that. So I just realized as you were talking, Perry, I forgot um, to launch our poll. We usually like to start reading the room and so shame on me. Uh, however, it's germane to you know the the tip that we're talking about right now, 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. I'd love to get a, a, a sense for the audience. Have you completed an authorized, authorized representative form with your loved one's insurance company? And as Perry mentioned, um, you know, it could, could go by different names. All right. So get about 90% of the vote in and we're 42% yes and 58% no. So um, I guess- That's pretty good. Yeah, really good, I think. Um, but also, you know, it, it's it's uh, a, a useful tip, I suppose, right? For a, a, a fair amount of people on, on, on the call today. Um, you know, it's worth spending the time um, to find those forms and, and get them in place. Um, even if you're not sure you're going to need them, I guess, by the way, is, is one thing I'd add. So with anything, um, to, to your earlier conversation point about being proactive instead of reactive, this is so much easier to fill out while your um, the person that you're caring for is able to help you fill out that form so you guys can be on the same page about it. So often, like with any form, but sometimes I, I you know, I was just um, reading about this with advanced directives also, which is a different topic, but that a lot of times people don't know whether these forms are already filled out, where they are and what the wishes are until that person is in a place of illness or unable to make those decisions or is no longer competent. So anytime you can get ahead of it on filling out any of these forms is a huge uh, benefit to you and to your loved one. Agreed, agreed. And I guess I don't want to put you on the spot, Perry, but I will. I want one more follow-up question on this topic. You mentioned as you were talking that you can, we can usually find these forms on the, on, uh, the insurance company's website. Any sort of, um, you know, because we're not talking about one insurance and there are lots of insurance companies, but any any sort of general tips or guidance on where do you look on the website? Um, I mean, I would probably well, just search, right? Um, I would probably use the search function. Search is a great way. You can always call member services too on the back of the number if you want to do that they'll be able to tell you uh, where to get it they might be able to email it to you or snail mail it to you if that's something that you um, prefer uh, but yes you could search for it sometimes these um, insurance websites actually have caregiver tabs or pages specific for family caregivers which I know we're getting into all the benefits of um, that ways of getting in touch with insurance and how it can help um, those caregiver support pages can be hugely helpful in general yeah. um, they they talk about all different types of benefits that you might be eligible for the member might be eligible for as well as these forms yeah yeah um agree agree uh, great points let's let's i'm just looking at the time let's move to the the second tip um and uh you know there's for for well, it's getting prepared for the call, right? You were alluding to it, um, but let's talk about that for a minute. So if if there were sort of a few must do's, right? If you're gonna make a call to your loved one's insurance, um, what would sort of be on your must do list before that call is made, before you sit down to, to, to dial the phone? Have the member's card or ID information. Um, so that'll usually be a member's number, a group, um, the type of plan, mm -hmm. but also in general, you're going to want to know your loved one's birth date. Often they're going to ask for that in order to be able to move on further in the conversation and sometimes a social security number and the address. So if I had to go into any conversation, I would want to have those things in front of me. Okay. Um, all right. So that... Member, uh, member number, address, date of birth, and maybe social. Yep. All right. Um, okay. So, and related is the next tip, which is sort of, uh, or the second part of getting prepared for the call. Um, but, like, I know we talk often, right? Uh, like, when we talk about advocating for our loved one in the context of at a medical appointment or things like that, we talk about notes, note taking, and um, and just this this really basic blocking and tackling stuff that is so easy that I forgot that I never did right uh, rarely did when I was in the midst of uh, of caring but 
like any other tips for sort of uh, to making the most of the call, let's say? Yes, and um, I believe the handout that you have has a lot of information related to this on there. So if this is useful to um, the participants, please, um, you know, take advantage of this guide that um, is the attachment. But what I would say is, is like, what are you calling about? So are you trying to find an in-network doctor or do you have a question about a bill? Um, different things like that. So it's interesting if you're calling about a physician to find out if they're in-network, um, you know, and this is also something that you can often do online, but you want to also have their address. This is a strange thing, but you know, there could be a lot of doctors by the same name or even in the same practice and you want to be very sure that you have the correct one that you're calling on. Um, uh, Matt, what you said, pen and paper, absolutely have that ready to go. Take notes while you're on the call. Write down the agent's name that you spoke with, and you can often ask for a reference number. Sometimes they'll give you a code, and sometimes it'll be the agent's name with like the date or a number on it. This is a really good thing to keep track of in case the next time you call, you probably won't get the same representative, and you can say, hey, I spoke to this person on this date, and this is my reference number. So they can automatically go back and look at your exact conversation and the information that was given to you. Um, so that is hugely helpful tip. Um, and then let's see, what, el what else? What am I missing here? Um, oh, if you're, if you're calling about a bill, have, have the actual bill with you because it'll also often have like a statement number on it or a patient um, account number that you'll want to be able to reference during that conversation. Okay. Yeah. And I, so that's good. I, one thing I did do um, because I was just <laughs> forever sort of like the paperwork of, of caregiving like the actual paper that accumulated right in my uh my my mom i had a binder for my mom and, and all of that i just it got sort of unruly so i got in the habit of just using the notes app on my phone and scanning the bills yeah. right onto uh onto my notes app so i always knew i had them just one other add-on um so i'm seeing a comment that someone isn't seeing the attachment um, you should see handouts in the console, a handout section, and there's one handout there, which is a PDF that you should be able to download. Um, so hopefully that helps. And if it doesn't, I see the question asker, I'll follow up directly after the session and make sure you get it. Okay. Uh, I think we might have solved the issue, but if if, if the the uh, it's a it's a handy little cheat sheet we have for a handout. So uh, if anyone isn't seeing it or forgets to download it, please do just just respond to uh, to your the the emails you've gotten uh, from GoToWebinar. Those come to me, and I'll be sure to uh, I'll be sure to make sure you you get it. So um, okay, so we're at 20 minutes past. We have 10 minutes, and I want to get into these last couple of tips, which uh, these are these are um, just really really helpful. And again, similar to what we've already talked about in terms of um, just being simple, maybe even obvious to some, but uh, they weren't. They, they you know they're not always obvious when you're in the midst of of helping a loved one, right? And when you're in those weeds, nothing. <laughs> few things are obvious uh, when you're just in the middle of all of it. So the next tip is getting, and again, you alluded to this, Barry, but getting familiar with um, the benefits programs that are offered by the insurance company uh, for your loved one, but also for, for you as, as a caregiver in some cases. Um, and I see this, what, what gets me so excited about this one and, and sort of also has me kicking myself because I didn't maximize this opportunity when I was caregiving, um, is I see this, like the portfolio of benefits that so many insurance companies offer now is, it, it, you know, in, in total could be a really um, uh, uh, just helpful addition, like part of my care team, right? They're, they're like, you know, all of these different services that are offered as part of the plan um, in total or individually could be just valuable pieces or components or, or parts of, of, of the care team and you know we talk about the this notion of building a care team all the time uh, but there's there's built-in sort of options right for the care team right within the insurance plan so you want to talk a little bit about that Perry 
Sure, and I'm also gonna add on that while I definitely suffer from being a broken record sometimes, it's that anything that is available to you that you can take advantage of, you should be taking advantage of as a family caregiver or a caregiver to a loved one. Um, so I, this, this goes to community programs, to insurance, to anything out there. Try to find out what you're eligible for, what you can get assistance with, and take it. Mm -hmm. Action, you know, take action on it. So we work with a lot of insurance um, customers, and I am often just astounded at how much is available, not just to the member, but to the caregiver as well. There are things like saving programs, grocery delivery, meals on wheels, um, after hospitalization programs, transportation, there could be diabetes or kidney care programs. There's usually a case management program that can help you organize the care that your loved one needs. There can be health coaches. I mean, I could keep on talking. There's sometimes there's memberships to gyms. Um, there's wellness apps meditation apps. I mean, you would be shocked if you really sit down and you could go through the benefit booklet at the beginning of the, the year with a plan. A lot of times they are, they are listed online. You could also have a conversation with member services to learn about all these different programs. But I can tell you there is definitely one out there that you don't know about that you could benefit from. It, it would be impossible yeah. not to. Yeah. And I, I mean, just the ones you're listing, um, you know, for the first few years of my caregiving, I, I was uh, living about three hours apart from my mother, right? And um, a grocery or meal delivery would have been an insanely valuable um, part of my Huge. care team, right? And yes. I didn't take advantage of it. And I, I so wish I had, right? Um, um, you know, not to mention other supports like like Carolong, right? That, that sort of are just, um, you know, Carolell gives a family caregiver a person, right? We're here for uh, the caregiver while they're there for their loved one. You know, it's the same sort of thing. Like yep. just, um, and I'm not a booklet person. I don't have the attention span, right? Um, to, to sit and read the booklet. I should, but I don't. Uh, so I love your, your suggestion. Just call member services. Like that's the reason for the call. Just call and what's, I need to know what's available. Um, Yes, and a lot of them have cheat sheets too. Right. Some of them have like, instead of going through the whole booklet, they have just a one pager with, here's the benefit, here's the phone number. This is what you want, this is how to get it. And, you know, to your point, like having the conversation can be easy, getting that shortened list of things that apply to you can be easy. It's out there, the information is out there. It's just the next step of kind of learning about it and then utilizing it. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, okay, so we have five minutes left now. Last tip, and this is actually something that um, very late in my caregiving I did take advantage of, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, but but um, this is all about the notion that many insurance companies have brick and mortar locations. Like they have um, retail centers, they're sometimes called, or member centers, or community centers. And these are places where uh, it might be in a mall or it might be in a strip mall or it might be, um, it, you know, wherever it is. It was in, it just incredibly valuable for me because it was um, it, for some inexplic inexplicable reason, it like felt easier for me to drive there than actually go through the phone tree. Right. And or maybe it was the comfort of just having a face to face conversation with someone. Um, and so so. That's another thing to sort of add to your list. Not that we're, we want to be creating a, a task list for, for caregivers on the call, but these are things that can uh, can really, really help. So any thoughts on uh, uh, just this, this sort of brick and mortar concept and taking advantage of that, Perry? Some of these like community or retail centers for certain insurance companies will have a social worker there. They will like that can help you get connected to services. They might have a nurse on staff. It's not a necessarily a medical center, but they have people that can provide really well educated guidance to you. 
Um, and sometimes they have like fun events, like they might have Tai Chi class or they might have a speaker come in and talk about something that's important to you. So just in the same way that like a, a senior center or community center, these could be available to you also through your insurance company. And again, I just think knowing about it is a good thing and finding out what you can, you know, what you can achieve through it. I love it. I love it. And uh, I, like I said, I wish I did that um, in particular uh, uh, sooner in my case. But um, well, we're just about at time. Uh, we'll leave the line open for um, you know the next two minutes before we hit the bottom of the hour for any questions. Um, and you know, again, just to reiterate, if people aren't able to download the handout. A, I'm, I'm sorry about that, and uh, B, please do respond. I'll, I'll send you, an, I'll send it to you uh, via email after the call. Um, Perry, any final thoughts for, for, for folks on the line about um, working with, uh, with their loved ones insurance company, but also just um, making the most of what's available? Any final thoughts for the group? I think I think we covered it pretty well. I know this is not necessarily a topic that when you hear it, you get excited about. That said, the more you know, it's just going to be something else that's in your back pocket that you can pull out and use when you need it. Um, and again, being a little bit repetitive, if you have the opportunity to get these forms in place that allow you to gather this information and advocate on behalf of your loved one with their insurance company now versus later, there's a good chance that you will be very glad that you did uh, when the time comes up. Uh, I echo that sentiment. And in general, I mean, my main takeaway, my thought would be um, see, the, see them, see the insurance company as part of the, part of the team. Um, you know, I, if I were to sum it up, that's how I'd sum it up. Um, any questions or comments after the fact, please do send me an email about the handout or otherwise. And uh, certainly happy to have you join us today. Thanks for being here. We'll do this again on May 19th. Uh, I'll be talking with Christine Harden Weiss, um, who is an adaptive equipment expert. And we'll be talking about seven pieces of adaptive equipment that any family caregiver must know about. So uh, I'm just, I'm really, really excited about that one. Christina's got a ton of energy and a ton of knowledge on the topic. So hope you can join us May 19th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Perry, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Really fun, Matt. Thank All you. Right. Okay, thanks. Take care, everybody. Bye now.